Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this session. A um, couple general reminders here. This is a live session. So if you have a question, please use the mic in the middle of the floor there. Um, and then uh, make sure that uh, uh, we give our attention here to uh, Tom, Thomas uh, Susler. Thomas is a senior staff water resource engineer and a technical lead for the Medford Stormwater Master Plan. He has been involved in the development of multiple stormwater master plans and has experience with the uh, development, calibration, and analysis of water and stormwater models using PC Swim, uh, XP Swim, and Info Water. He's going to give a presentation on making sense of it all, a user friendly visualization tool to analyze model results. So, Thomas, take it away. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this, this afternoon, and uh, thank you to the virtual audience there. Like, like the introduction presentation today is called Making Sense of It All, a user-friendly visualization tool to analyze model results. And you'll notice that there are two other names up there. Uh, Ayman Alafifi unfortunately couldn't be here to present today, but he was instrumental in helping us um, build this tool, as well as Angela Whelan, who is the project manager on the Stormwater Master Plan that I'm gonna talk a little bit about. Um, and she uh, put some good faith in Ayman and I to create it a new way of doing something that she'd been doing on master plans for a long time. So I wanted to give her credit for that. Before we jump into it, you'll see a couple of, of photos here. It's, it's beautiful Medford in the sunset there, uh, and then a Power BI dashboard down in the corner. Those are the two main components. Uh, we are gonna talk about our visualization tool, which is, uh, has a couple of, of elements and then ends up in Power BI, um, as well as a stormwater master plan. So I know this is not in the stormwater track, uh, the idea is that this tool is applicable to all kinds of hydraulic modeling. So if you're not a stormwater person, that's okay. Hopefully there's still some, uh, some use out of this for you. So jumping right into it, gonna give a little overview, background on the master plan, talk about our results processing workflow that we created for this tool, give a demo of the dashboard. Um, for that demo, I'm gonna have to run over to the, the computers over there and click through stuff. So you won't see me anymore, but the, the screen should should move and we should be able to click through that. Um, so just give me some patience there. Uh, talk a little bit about the advantages of our tool and project results, how we used it, where we've gone from there on this master plan, and then some next steps and, and key takeaways. All right, so I did wanna get started with a quick poll if everyone's willing. Um, you'll see this on the next slide as well. I was also concerned about font size, but I don't think it'll be a problem. Um, if you use your phone and go to that link in your browser or just text uh, my name and 928 to uh, 22333. You should get a little text back and be able to respond to A, B, C, or D. So I'm gonna go ahead and, all right, that didn't work. <laughs> you know, let's uh, not try to troubleshoot that too much. But the main thing I wanted to gauge was where everyone was at with hydraulic, hydrologic modeling specifically. Um, so maybe by a quick show of hands, if hydrologic and hydraulic modeling is something you have experience with, you do sometimes. Um, can I just see everyone's hands? Great, awesome. And if this is it's brand new to you, uh, you don't do any modeling or maybe you just discuss it, or raise hands for that. Okay, so a good mix. I just wanted to kind of gauge where we're at, but it's, this will be useful to kind of where everyone stands. Okay, so quick overview. Our visualization tool has two main components. The first is kind of the back end. And that is R. R is a programming language for anyone who doesn't know, just like um, Python or C++ or something like that. We run R in R Studio, And I'll talk a little bit more about why we chose that language in a second here. And then the other component, the user facing side is Microsoft Power BI. It's part of the Microsoft suite of tools. It's a really nice platform for kind of making sense of and filtering and visualizing different kinds of data. A little background on stormwater master plan. I did want to acknowledge before I go further that a master plan is a long kind of uh, multi-year often process. There's lots of different financial analysis, staffing and maintenance. There's, there's the capacity and water quality modeling itself, but this is an involved thing. You don't have to read all those bullets, but what we're talking about today is a tool just to assist with one part of that whole master planning process. So it's not gonna solve the entire master plan experience, but it's uh, just kind of in that 
capacity modeling, identifying project opportunity areas, and moving forward into capital project development. Quick background, Medford is where our stormwater master plan is. The city of Medford, Oregon, it's uh, along I-5 down just north of the California border for anyone who's not familiar. Population of about 90,000 folks. And for this master plan, it's pretty modeling intensive. Some master plans focus on a few areas that they wanna analyze, maybe a few specific basins. Some are water quality or maintenance focused. Ours was capacity stormwater system focused. So the city wanted to model their entire system down to 12 inch pipes, which is equates to about 200 miles of model conduits. So you'll see a screenshot here. Our model was built in PC swim. Um, swim is what we've written the tool to work best with. But again, it should be applicable to other types of hydraulic modeling, whether that's stormwater, wastewater, uh, drinking water, perhaps. And so if you see on that screen, the blue is creeks and irrigation canals that interact directly with Medford stormwater system. The irrigation canals especially have an impact in the winter. Um, the yellow is all of our pipes. We've got roadside ditches, uh, detention facilities that we modeled are those green squares. And then all the red triangles are out falls to the main receiving water, which is um, Bear Creek runs from south to north through the center of the city. So don't have to dwell on all that too much, but I just wanted to kind of call attention to the fact that this is a big model. It's bigger than most of the stormwater models that I've been involved with or that our group in, at, in Portland and Brown and Caldwell typically does. And so we're tasked with, we have this large model and we wanna get from here all the way through to capital improvement projects that are constructible, they're implementable within the city's budgetary limits, timeframes. So how do you synthesize all the results that this model is going to spit out under different scenarios and get that from again results into capital improvement projects. So that's where we had this tool kind of in development already. And this was a great chance to uh, improve it, implement it. And uh, Angela, let us, let us get started with that. Okay, now to the part that is interesting and most interesting, which is our results processing workflow. So again, this is PC Swim, which the output of PC Swim are these text-based report files. Lots of other modeling software has a similar thing where you've got text file, 60,000 lines in this case, and wouldn't be much shorter even if the model was smaller. Um, it's tables of results about your subcatchment runoff, about your link flows, et cetera. So that's the, the starting output. And in a normal situation, you might then go back into the PC Swim interface and look through their kind of internal tools to graph things and visualize. Maybe you copy tables out to Excel. We wanted to change that up a little bit. And so the first step is our R script. So we wrote this R script to read those report files. It finds them in the, in the folder. You specify where they are, kind of extracts, compiles, organizes these. We customize it to read just the tables we want it to read. Um, and I'll talk a little more about that in a second. That goes into Excel, exports directly into Excel tables where you have hydrologic results, hydraulic results, um, some other stability reports, et cetera. And Excel is the back end of Power BI. So Power BI is reading what's in those Excel tables and that allows you now to have your interactive visualizations, your fi filtering tools, and has some really nice export capabilities that um, help with GIS mapping and uh, some other deliverables that got into the final master. So drilling down into one of these four kind of phases, is why R. First of all, R is free. It's open source. You can download R and, and R Studio. It's got a lot of great packages for this type of data processing that are also open source, have good documentation. So, you know, I'm not a software engineer. Uh, it was easy to find packages to help with this kind of thing. What in this case, what does it do? We take something that looks like that top picture, and that's our text file screenshot, it's a subcatchment summary a whole bunch of data, it extracts and compiles results from multiple scenarios. So for our project, we had eight different models or model scenarios. Those are four different design storms and then an existing land use condition and a future land use condition for development. And so that's, that's eight models and it's pulling from each of those model files and creating tables so that someone doesn't have to copy and paste all that stuff into a single master Excel sheet to look at it all at once. It's not editing the output data, it's just organizing. And 
I'll talk more about this at the end, but what could it do? Um, we want to get R running within Power BI. That is something you can do. And that helps people that are a little less literate with R or with coding be able to use this tool. So that's kind of a next step. And then it could also edit input files, which has applications maybe in calibration or in sensitivity analysis. You read that text-based input file, you make one little change, one parameter, it's bumped up 10%, exports a new file. You bump it up 15%, exports a new file. So that's got some potential uses for you know, sensitivity analysis rather than having to copy and paste and save lots of model files over and over just to make little tweaks. But we'll get to that later. We had another poll here. Um, just curious, again, show of hands, uh, who uses Power BI or has used it before? Okay, not too many. So that'll make the demo um, useful as well. And so before we get to that, this is a screenshot of the, the dashboard that we put together for the city of Medford on our master plan. I'm going to run over there in a second and start using it. But before I do, I just wanted to draw your attention to a couple of reasons it was so useful on this project. First of all, like I mentioned, the size of the model, but then also Medford has some interesting design criteria for their stormwater system. Um, pipes that most pipes in the system are subject to the 10 year design storm. But if your pipe has 200 plus CFS during the 25 year design storm, you have to design to that 25 year storm. So toggling back and forth between results in the 10 and the 25 year um, gets a little bit messy. And similar thing for culverts, culverts need to go to the 25 year storm. Um, and so when you built the whole model and some, some nodes are inlets of culverts, you wanna check if those are flooding in the 25 versus the 10. Um, Power BI's filtering capabilities are really good. So if you'll give me just one minute, I'm gonna walk over here and show you what this thing actually does look like. Okay, and can everyone hear me still? Cool, so you can't see my face anymore, but that's all right. Um, you see a lot of stuff going on here. The first main thing is our map, and I'll explain kind of what all these different widgets and stuff are. The colored polygons you see there are the 11 main drainage basins in the city of Medford. So we want to map those, and then all that red and blue is the 5,000 plus junctions that we model as part of this hydraulic model. Um, the blue ones are culverts and or inlets and outlets of culverts and, and red are the rest. So the first thing you might think is we have, we have some stats on the side for you know, each basin, how many nodes are there. You'll notice that this number is the same across all eight of our different model scenarios. That's because the geometry and the hydraulics is the same. The only thing that changes is land use, um, and the design storm that was run through the model. So the first thing you might wanna do is just cut through the noise to only focus on, again, this is a, a stormwater project. We wanna look at where there's flooding, there's capacity issues. So first thing is which nodes flood for any period of time according to in, across any of our eight design storm scenarios um, according to PC Swim. So we'll hit that button first, everything updates. You'll start to see that yes, as you expect, Fewer nodes flood during the two year than the 25 and the 100 year storm. And more nodes flood in the future condition when you have more built out condition, you have more impervious area, et cetera. And so from here, um, I just wanted to run through the main way we use this tool on the Medford Master Plan Project. And I think it illustrates most of its capabilities. So like I mentioned before, we wanted to get from a whole bunch of results citywide to at a reasonable number of capital improvement projects. And to do that, we wanted to zoom in and focus on where there are little clusters of, of flooding, where there's a problem area. So we might go basin by basin and do that. So the first thing I'll do is select Lazy Creek. That's gonna update everything, pull us on in to see Lazy Creek. And there we go. Um, these are only the nodes there. You'll see we now have 159 that flood for any period of time. We also might wanna focus on what the majority of our, our nodes design storm is. So that's the 10 year storm. We had plenty of flooding observed in the existing condition to wanna 
focus on that. So we're gonna do 10 year existing condition. Now we're down to 81 junctions. And a conversation we had with the city as well, we, we're gonna have a lot of little areas to look at. What about things that maybe the flooding isn't so bad? Maybe it bubbles out of a curb inlet and runs down the gutter and, and doesn't cause any damage. So we settled on, based on that conversation back and forth, let's only worry about places where the node is gonna flood for at least a half an hour. So I'm gonna input that little filter here for the 10 year storm. Now we're down to 69 nodes to look at. So we can zoom in, move around. And this is what we did. We went through the whole, the whole system basin by basin after applying all these filters and found places that looked you know, hydraulically connected. You'll notice there's no pipes on this map. Um, it's a bit of a limitation right now. It was complicated with kind of permission sharing and Power BI and the city's GIS. But imagine we have this on one screen and we have GIS or the model on another screen. So you can see which nodes are connected to each other and got the pipe network. I might know that these five nodes run in a line. And so I'm gonna select those and call that. Yeah, that looks like one, one problem area. So I'm gonna select all these. Second. Bear with me, there we go. <laughs> Doesn't wanna do that. Well, that's okay. If you select those nodes, it's gonna reduce this list on the left side to only those five. Those five nodes then I could export as a CSV file, which is the standard operating procedure that we did. And so, this is now a cluster or a problem area. And you've got all these different little clusters. And then we wrote a quick R script to compile that, all those CSV files into one. Um, so now you have a really powerful file that can pull into GIS, can pull into Excel, and, and you can look at the names of each node and, and kind of categorize them by a flooding rate. And so that was helpful for creating mapping deliverables and other things later. That's the main workflow. You can see there's some other tabs down here. Those were helpful for finding the conduits that did need to consider the 25 year storm, we could, we could start applying other filters. Another thing this lets you do is maybe you're curious about when there's flooding in the two year storm for half an hour. That's not the design criteria, that's not the level of service goal, but it does let you prioritize where there might be more pressing capacity restrictions. So that was really instrumental in helping sort through all, all the different locations and find some priority. So I'm gonna, Go back into the PowerPoint now. We'll save questions on the dashboard itself until the end, but I'm happy to come back over here at that time and, and kind of walk through things. So thank you for your patience through that. And now let's go back to Back here, um, we got a few more slides. Now uh, that you've seen what it looks like, what it feels like to navigate it, and I will say I'm not a Power BI user most of the time. I was new to it for this specific application. Um, Iman is is a little bit more of a guru about that, and so um, that's part of the idea is that this can be used by non-technical staff or technical staff that don't know Power BI super well. It's it's supposed to be as user friendly and accessible as possible which is one of the advantages. First thing is, is to reduce that model results review time. If you can look at what's going on across all of your scenarios at once in one place, that changes and reduces the amount of time you have to copy tables out into Excel, you have to open different model files and close them. And, and it just helps to visualize if you change one thing, you tweak something in your model, you rerun it, that process is now just make the change in the model, click run, run the R script, click refresh on your Power BI dashboard, and everything updates in a second. And the script takes a minute or two to run um, and wouldn't be that much longer if you had 20 model scenarios or something like that. So it's helping to create those efficiencies, getting from results into analyzing and making sense of things. It helps to improve, improve, QC, improve QC, especially for folks that aren't as familiar with PC Swim. Maybe you've got a, a subject matter expert who's really good with hydraulic hydrologic modeling, but just doesn't have a lot of experience clicking through PC Swim. 
We can export tables like the stability of the model, like these kind of summary statistics where someone can check, okay, the rainfall does increase from the two to the 10 to the 100 year storm. That makes sense. The infiltration is reduced when we look at the future scenario where you have more impervious area. Some of these tables that pull results from all of our scenarios into one place lets kind of that high, high level QC happen more efficiently. And most importantly is, is just delivering valuable data to the client. All that filtering that we could do allowed them to get on the phone and get on a screen share with us and talk about that half an hour flood duration threshold and what it would mean if they bumped it to an hour or to 10 minutes. Um, you can navigate those different design criteria. The export capabilities allowed us to much more quickly produce maps like this. This is a screenshot of, of a deliverable and a tech memo to them, um, which just shows each of those little flooding clusters that I showed kind of how we identified them, provide some context, add their GIS back in. And uh, another advantage is the tables that are sitting in the back end of Power BI, just applying a little bit of formatting and a little bit of a header to those, you have a more traditional stormwater master plan deliverable that, that people can really comb through the actual tables of data if they want to. So that, that became one of our tech memo deliverables as well. And going back a little bit to the master plan process where we took this from after using the tool was we identified all those clusters, all those opportunity areas and put them in a big spreadsheet where this with a little bit of a problem description, the dashboard helped us immensely with compiling these statistics like how many nodes flood at this location? What is the longest duration of flooding? Do any of the nodes flood during the two year storm? Trying to build a bit of a data set for each of those spots so that when we turned it over to staff at the city of Medford, they could come back to us with an initial prioritization of what was hundreds of little areas to focus on a more manageable subset to do an alternatives analysis. So we took those high priority, more technically complicated areas, did your traditional alternatives analysis where we looked to, for pipe upsizing or green infrastructure or reroute opportunities, something to address and a capital project, the, uh, the capacity restrictions and prevent flooding in the future. So of those, got them all the way through and, and leaned on those maps that we could produce and the tool itself to make this an iterative process and a more collaborative process with the folks at the city of Medford, it's their master plan, it, it's not ours, um, to come up with alternatives that they felt good about, that they understood the whole context of, that they could see the downstream impacts of, get those through to cost estimation um, and include them as fact sheets that look something like this in the, in the master plan. Finally, once we have those select set of high priority projects, we turned it back over to the city staff to rank them and score them based on different criteria like flood frequency, flood severity, uh, operations, things like that, and have a bit of a score emerge to, they're already high priority, but how do you schedule those projects and identify funding and which, what is the highest high priority project? Um, and that multi-criteria multi decision analysis tool, nothing too fancy, just a kind of a weighted, weighted metric tool. Um, so just wanted to give a little bit of a insight into where we went from there after using this dashboarding and visualization tool. And uh, we're, we have the draft master plan been reviewed by city council. As part of this effort, they're doing a rate study to ensure that there's a funding mechanism for their projects. Again, this is a master plan. It's a 20 year horizon for stormwater, um, stormwater projects. And so that's where we stand now. And I think uh, I'll go back in to, to talk about the tool for a second here, but I think having this was really instrumental in making this process feel more collaborative and allowing the decision makers to get in and see the nitty gritty when they don't have PC swim on their computer. Or they don't quite work with this stuff every day and they can see why we arrived at the different capital improvement projects that are gonna cost you know, taxpayer money, why, why we got there, help tell us, help us tell that story. Back to the tool in general, some other uses that we've already implemented it. We've used it on a couple of other stormwater master plan projects, including one where the model was built in InfoSwim. Right now that just takes a few edits to lines of code um, to do. And we hope to 
find a way to implement it on uh, maybe a sanitary master a sanitary project, something with a hydraulic model in another world besides stormwater master plans. Um, we see it as pretty adaptable at this point. And so I mentioned this a little bit earlier. We want to get that R script running within Power BI. So all a user has to do is edit a path, you know, where are my input, where are my results files, what are they called, hit go, and then it just makes this tool a lot more accessible to other folks. Uh, as always, there's code improvements, you know, someone that is more experienced with R could look at the code that we wrote and find little ways to tweak it. So there's, there's always little iterative improvements to that, making it run more efficiently and clearly. And then I mentioned some improvements we wanna to make to the dashboard itself, more aesthetic things, making that mapping tool more user-friendly, including other GIS layers and pipes and stuff, and just anything we can do to make it a little bit more helpful. I did wanna close here with a few takeaways. A um, few key takeaways from this master plan project and the, and the script itself. I've been working on this project for about two and a half years now. And the script has been one, tool has been one part of that. The first is that efficient compilation of results encourages good modeling practices. I feel that this is true. I think if there's less of a barrier between I tweaked something and I can see what that result was across all my model scenarios, I think you're more likely to have an iterative modeling process. You're less likely to see a little tiny thing and maybe think, well, it's not that important. I don't have the time to fix it and then copy all the results tables into Excel again and go through this whole exercise and update my GIS maps. It in, I think it encourages um, a little more flexibility in that modeling process, which is always helpful. Secondly, unexpected results emerge when the full picture is accessible. So when you can see all, you know, what your results are at one node in eight scenarios, when you can zoom out and then zoom back in, maybe the places you thought you had capacity restrictions or um, maintenance issues or other things aren't where they really were. It, it just provides a, a more full picture and so hopefully um, illuminates some, some unexpected or, or other insights and you feel like you have a more complete view of the system. Last one. Um, adaptive visualizations facilitate decision making. So I talked about this a little bit already, but um, especially in a virtual world, you know, if even if it wasn't for COVID, most of the collaborative meetings that our team and the folks at the city of Medford had were always going to be virtual. We're in Portland, they're down in Medford. And so it's really helpful to have something up on a screen share to walk through and put, empower the people at the city to have more ownership over the reasons why those decisions were made and be able to understand them, you know, they're technical as well and, and go from um, a model that we built and kind of lives in our world to being more of a shared space for us to collaborate and look at, look at the results. And just one final thing, um, sometimes master plans are a little bit removed from reality. They're far from the ground. Uh, and so in the stormwater case, or if you, if you do sanitary things, it, it's important to bring it all back to the, the reasons why we do this work. Um, this was a, these are a couple photos taken this 4th of July weekend. Medford had kind of a strange summer storm and they had some local flooding. They had some, some garages and houses and, and basements flood. Um, and so anything we can do to improve that process, making their infrastructure more resilient uh, is gonna benefit people on the ground. And I will say that these two intersections did come up in our model. So you never wanna see flooding, but you want to know that it, it did predict with a similar magnitude storm, a similar thing. Um, but yeah, just bringing that all back to, if it can be a tool that helps have a conversation and makes these, these capital improvement projects more targeted, um, then I think that's a win. So that's all the time that I have. Uh, we've got about 10 minutes, I think, for questions. So turn that over. And like we mentioned in the last presentation, if you weren't in this room, we need to do questions on that mic in the, in the center so the people online can hear. So thank you. Any questions? And like I said, if you want me to pull up the dashboard again, I can. Just got to go sit over there. Um, good, good work, by the way. But uh, it seemed like... Um, the Power BI dashboard was really helpful in, um, in your workflow process. 
I was curious if you were planning to turn that over to the client as a deliverable and how they might use it in the future at this point in time. Great question. Something we've definitely thought about. It, in this case, we decided not to do that, not to turn it over to them, but that's certainly an aspiration and something we want to make possible in the future. Some of that has to do with just whose GIS layers are owned where and some of the little file um, intricacies. But I think we do see it as something, especially because you know a master plan is a living document. Um, we hope that this is used and referenced for the next couple of decades, far after we're working on this project. So yeah, that's definitely a goal. We just didn't do it in this case. Hi there, <clears throat> again, great uh, presentation. Uh, I like the way you had uh, and showed uh, the uh, depth of flooding and the duration of flooding as a way to show consequences. Did you actually dive a little deeper and look at potential impacts and risk to each of those, those nodes over how many homes, you know, critical locations, or did you just you know, use the, the model to uh, prioritize? Sure, um, yeah, thank you, that's a good question as well. We didn't do that kind of traditional, uh, we didn't assign any metrics to like potential financial damage or other risk metrics based on depth of duration of flooding specifically, but we sort of turned that over to the folks at the city when they were going through their prioritization process with their knowledge of the system and the individual intersections and um, gave them that information and a little bit more of a judgment call for sure, but something we hope factored into that process of prioritizing each location, but yeah, it wasn't a numerical um, kind of hard coded thing. There's no other questions. Uh, other questions? We have a little bit more time here. So if we could get a couple more questions, that would be great. Yeah, great presentation. Appreciate that. A um, couple questions for you. Um, and I may have missed this at the beginning. How long did it take you to, um, I guess, batch run all the models and compile it and get it into Power BI? Sure. The batch running within PC Swim, um, it takes, for a, a citywide model this large, a, an hour or two, that's on the PC swim side. It didn't, doesn't really have anything to do with our, our code after that. Right. Um, but then running the, the script to compile and export the tables that Power BI reads takes about two minutes. Yeah. Pretty quick. Cool. And then a, one last question for you. Um, did you um, also have like another layer in the model or the Power BI that express the results of the improvements that you that you proposed to reduce flooding? Was that something that is kind of layered into that Power BI? Sure, not in this case. Once we moved into alternative analysis kind of stage and modeling those alternatives, um, which we did do, you know, have capital improvement project models in PC Swim, because we had gotten down to our 15 to 25 locations, we didn't feel the need to make sense of everything in one place. Again, we could rely on those alternatives models. And, and, and PC Swim is pretty good with visualizations and where you can see um, the improvements that you made. So on an individual location basis, uh, we felt comfortable just doing it within PC Swim. And one last question. Yeah. Uh, did you prepare exhibits for the master plan straight out of the Power BI? Yes and no. Nothing that was like a screenshot of the dashboard went into the master plan, but the groups of nodes and the way we were able to assign names to those that talk directly to the GIS. So that would refresh automatically. And you know, we had those CSV files referenced in GIS where we were producing our map exhibits. And so that stuff got directly into the master plan and would change quickly if anything changed in Power BI. Okay, thanks. I'll yeah. stop hogging yeah. the mic. Appreciate Thank you. It. A good presentation. I was just curious on your calibration effort that you did with this project. Sure. Yeah, I totally left that out. Um, we did calibrate this model. We had five flow monitoring locations in sort of disparate areas of the city that we conducted about three months of winter um, flow monitoring at the start. And so then we calibrated, did a, a little sensitivity analysis for the model and calibrated as best we could with sort of citywide adjustments to um, 
assumed impervious percentages for different land use types to the soil conductivity uh, parameters and, and I think subbasin width and flow length a little bit, just a few tweaks that we could apply citywide that let us tailor in based on the different soil characteristics of specific areas of the city and um, land use characteristics to calibrate as best we could to those, uh, the flow monitoring data. Did that with more of a peak, peak flow calibration approach as opposed to volume based, considering all of it, but that was the target for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, is the modeler the one that's doing the visualizations or is this, uh, you're passing it off to someone else and they're doing the Power BI, then it comes back to the modeler? Sure, in this case, it was the same team. So I and a, and a few other people were the ones that built the hydraulic model. Um, and then Iman, who helped build this tool, was not as involved with the modeling process. He did some QC of it, but um, so I guess a little bit of both in that case. In this case, I was the one using the dashboard and going through and identifying those locations and then also doing capital improvement modeling and stuff. So it stayed within the same team. But I could see, I guess, on, on other projects where we've used this, um, other folks have built the model and run their results and then we've turned over the tool to them. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Thomas. Yeah. Thanks, everyone.